Okay, last video regarding the Intel stuff, I promise. As you can imagine, we talk about the failing CPUs and Intel's involvement and the fact that the motherboards still own a huge piece of this, even though the Intel statement said their microcode, there's much deeper nuances to why the dynamic between motherboards and CPUs is causing these failures in 13th and 14th gen. Anyway, I digress. Uh, as you can imagine, my inbox has lots of people saying, what can I do to keep my CPU from failing while I'm waiting for the latest microcode that is supposed to help relieve any of the risks to the future. So we're gonna talk about that today. I'm gonna show you what you need to do with your system to hopefully keep it running in the meantime. Um, and hopefully this will be it, hopefully. For those looking for a high-end custom gaming experience, look no further than Falcon Northwest. Falcon Northwest has been building PCs made for gamers for over 30 years with a focus on a true high-end gaming experience. Custom cases available only through Falcon Northwest feature state-of-the-art testing and design to ensure that every component is performing at their best through thermal imaging and rigorous lab testing designed and overseen by the Falcon Northwest founder himself. With a complete lineup of systems ranging from small to large, every Falcon Northwest system includes a three-year warranty policy and a year of two-way overnight shipping coverage providing the ultimate peace of mind. To see all that Falcon Northwest has to offer, follow the sponsored link in the description below. So this is my Falcon Northwest Talon. Um, had this system for a while now and actually hasn't been touched in quite a while in terms of updating BIOS and stuff. So I figured today would be a good opportunity to talk about that. So I actually had a long conversation with Falcon about this because obviously any system integrator is gonna have a lot more in-depth knowledge of what the nuances are, what the challenges are. Uh, so I wanted to kind of pick their brains on what consumers can do right now to make sure, and, and not just their own customers, their own SI customers, but anyone running an Intel system right now that's affected by 13th and 14th gen failures or potential failures, what can they do to keep their, their risk at, as low as possible? So the very first thing that was said is the number one thing you can possibly do is update your BIOS. The reason for that is the fact that many of these fixes uh, are motherboard issues as well. I don't really have the time to go into a deep dive on this. I know Wendell has talked about it with level one techs. I know Steve has talked about some BIOS stuff, but he's, he's more on the crusade against the brand, if you will. Um, so we'll back off from that. But the um, Buildzoid has also done some amazing content regarding the problems with the motherboard settings and BIOS and the way that they're designed, um, which is just layering in the Intel problem. So really it's kind of the perfect storm between Intel not keeping close enough tabs on their board partners and keeping them within spec. Um, and then the board partners obviously taking too much liberties with what the CPU's capabilities are when it comes to voltages and stuff. So I had asked a question, like if I was to recommend that everyone drop their frequencies and drop their voltages and just keep the CPUs more gimped in the meantime, um, it was basically explained to me that that's actually somewhat part of the problem. Some of the problem too is, is sometimes undervolting or undervolting by the motherboard manufacturers has been causing instability problems. So that's why the number one recommendation is going to be to update your BIOS. Now that's scary for a lot of people. Um, and most SIs do not recommend that their customers update their BIOS without using some sort of an installer or a guide from the SI themselves. The SI really wants to keep the customer's um, experience very curated so that they know exactly what the customer is doing. They need step-by-step -step instructions, which is exactly what Falcon provided for their systems. Um, doesn't matter if it's a Falcon Northwest or an iBuyPower or an NZXT build or an Origin PC or um, Digital Storm or uh, CLX or whatever brands that are out there, right? You just talk to them first and foremost because if your CPU fails, you're gonna have to go through them to get it fixed, which I still think is an unnecessary step because of the fact that you would have to send in your entire system to get it replaced, that ends up being the problem. So first and foremost, this BIOS right here is old. Uh, this one is version 1303. And I think the BIOS that we're actually gonna be putting on this machine that was sent over by Falcon Northwest, because they test it first, they they test the BIOS to make sure that what, they're, what the brand, is, like in this case, Asus is sending to them saying this is gonna fix the problems. They go through and vet all of that and say yes or no, these are not good enough. Um, we're not gonna send these to our customers, et cetera. So the latest BIOS, I think, it's 2406, we'll see in a moment. Um, it's apparently the one that they're highly recommending. In fact, they sent out a blast email last week to all their customers saying, use this BIOS. And then based on which motherboard you're using in their build, they show you which one to use. So we're gonna be doing some A-B testing, if you will, not as controlled of an environment as I would like, but this is out of the box. The only thing that's changed is I did change the RAM. It's not RGB RAM anymore, it's 6,000 megahertz. Um, 32 gigabytes of crucial RAM. I put the other RAM, which was non-binary RAM. I wanted to do a video on that and I kind of forgot and I'll come back to it probably. That's like 
96 gigabytes of non-binary RAM, which is like 248 RAMs or gig sticks. So they're in something else right now. That's the only change I made to this system. So BIOS settings are all untouched with the exception of enabling the XMP for the latest BIOS. Um, you'll also notice too, let's talk about the, the voltage for a second because Phil did point it out. 1.43 in the BIOS is actually normal. Some BIOSes, and I might, Falcon showed this, um, can go up to like 1.67, which is very not good. So there's lots of weirdness happening in the BIOS. So let's talk about some of the settings here. So you'll notice there's none of the additional tab that was added later, which is the Intel specification settings. So this is all the typical stuff. Let BIOS optimize, right? Um, there's my XMP. So if I go into the CPU power management stuff, you'll see there it is. It's uncapped, right? 40,000 or 40,000, 4,095 watt, which is unlimited. 511 amps, which again is unlimited because 512 is unlimited. So essentially it's just for 56 seconds, I guess it doesn't matter because it just goes from 4,000 to 4,000. Let the cooler be the limit. So TVB or thermal velocity boost, it's using that table to say, hey, at these temperatures run these frequencies. Well, we can actually look at the TVB on this. So from the main AI tweaker tab, if you go to thermal velocity boost, you can actually see what the tables look like right here, right? So one active core wants to go to 60, two wants to go to 60, three wants to go to 57. Do you notice there's no temp bin? This is where it should kind of be saying at these temperatures drop the frequencies 100. Um, Intel actually specifies at 85 degrees Celsius is where you're supposed to lose the first 100 megahertz bin. They're all zeros on here because basically it's just saying let the cooler be the limiting factor at that point. And it's basically going to only limit if you start to hit the, the top end temperature threshold, which is 100 C in this case. But like I said, Intel has it set to, I believe 85C is where you should drop the first 100 megahertz and then it, it goes on from there. So that's all zeros. I'm curious to see if any of this is gonna change at all. Um, this is also gonna be entirely dependent on the profile that's preloaded. So on the newer BIOS, you'll see there's gonna be Intel settings that will show up that should change some of this. So I'm, I'm just only looking at this with you guys on camera because I'm gonna be looking for things that are changing. I wanna see what the new BIOS is gonna look like, especially since it's so, this one's so old versus the, the one that I'm gonna be loading. but. I wanna see if we're gonna lose any performance too. So we're, I'm taking you along for the ride on how to update the BIOS on an Asus motherboard. You'll have to follow the motherboard manufacturers for any MSI, Gigabyte, ASRock, or any other boards that you might have. Um, usually they're pretty easily built into the BIOS themselves where you just run utility within the BIOS and that's that. I highly recommend you also remove any overclocks that you have applied right now, any overclocks at all for obvious reasons, especially since right now voltage is the number one killer of the uh, the CPUs for a multitude of reasons. So Cinebench R23 and Hardware Monitor are my two favorite utilities when it comes to checking thermals on a CPU and voltages and such. It's free, I've done a video about it. Um, you can see our vid max is set to 1.40 whatever right here. That's actually what we saw in the BIOS there. But we also have our vCore um, right here, which is gonna be fluctuating based on the load. So you can see it's going between 1.385. If I stop wiggling the mouse, it'll probably drop back down to 0.7. Nope. There it goes, 0.97. And then we're looking at our wattages down here too. So our package wattage, and we can see our IA core wattages right here, but we're looking to see, I'm curious as to how high that's gonna probably go. Based on our cooler, it's probably gonna go well over 300. I'm guessing near 320 watts. And then obviously our, our temperatures and our voltages. I just wanna, see, and then our score, what's our score gonna be and what's it gonna be impacted by with this update. So a single multi-threaded run, it's gonna get hot. There's 80, 94, 96, 98, 97, then 100, there it goes. And we even have a red light on the motherboard that they're showing we are throttling currently. Um, but not really though, because look, we're still at 5.7 all core. Oh, one core just hit 5.6 for a second. 5.7. So if we take a look, we 341 watts. <laughs> it's, we have a 280 millimeter AIO on here. That, we're asking a whole lot of that thing. It's 341 watts. Oh, we got a 41,273 though. That's a really good score. The problem is every time we hammer the CPU like this, we're potentially degrading it more. So, and that was one run. We would obviously lose speed as the cooler becomes saturated and the coolant temp comes up, we'll start seeing those clocks drop. But they're not gonna be dropping um, because of the fact that it's realizing that the coolant's hot or anything is gonna be dropping because it's gonna be hitting the thermal threshold so hard that it has no choice but to drop the frequency and the voltages to try and get the temperatures down. So right now I'm just scraping that limit. I'm probably just barely bumping my head on it as we do our runs. So I flashed my BIOS, well, I copied my BIOS onto a uh, thumb drive and then we're just gonna boot into our, our BIOS here 
and then we are going to use the built-in utility. Now I could do a BIOS flashback on this if I wanted, but I don't feel there's any reason to if the system's up and running. Any profiles that you have saved, by the way, any custom profile stuff will get lost. In fact, we'll probably even lose the Falcon logo unless I go in because this BIOS has the logo on it because it's part of an SI distributed BIOS. We have to go in and enable that though. So let's do advanced mode, go over here to tool, Asus Easy Flash 3 utility. Let's navigate to our thumb drive, which should be that guy. Nope, oh, it's that guy. There it is right there. So Z790E 2402. So yeah, we went from a very old BIOS now to a very much more <laughs> revision. Yeah, 1303 to a 2402. So it has been a while. Here's the thing regarding Asus BIOS updates specifically. It'll probably restart a couple times. It might even look like it hung a few times. Let it go. Be Elsa, let it go. It might, it, it's probably gonna go through and do an initial clear like it's doing now, then a flash to the EEPROM. Then it'll restart and probably flash something to like Asus Aura. There's like something else on the board it flashes for Aura. And then it might restart again and do the ME um, which is the, the uh, management engine update for the, the CPU. And then it might do another restart. So don't interrupt the process. Or the next video you'll be looking up is how do I do a BIOS flashback on a bricked BIOS. So I'm gonna let this go. It's gonna take a minute. It's a big update because a lot has changed since the last one. And this is how we know we're ready to proceed. So it did the initial erase the EEPROM, then you see the progress bar, then a reboot, and then it shows flashing LED firmware, which is like the Aura stuff, and then a reboot, and then the management engine or the ME firmware, and then a reboot, and now here we are. So every time it turns off, I've seen people then like start to try and hit delete and mash the buttons and stuff. And although once it gets past the, the main firmware flash, it tends to be able to self-recover pretty well and realize like, hey, we're not done with what we were doing. Don't interrupt it. Just let it go until you get to here. And now we can go back into our bio settings where everything's gonna be basically, well look, our voltage already dropped down some. So from 1.40 something to 1.359, um, XMP is currently disabled, that's fine. So let's see now what has changed once we get in here. So here's our Intel default and then Asus Advanced OC Profile. Activate the ASUS Advanced OC profile to set all configurations to auto without power limit, current, and voltage safeguards. Utilizing unlocked features or modifying the clock frequency or voltage could lead to decreased instability and lifespan of the processor. They were doing it for you already. Don't let them fool you. Uh, freak and, and other system components. If you intend to overclock your processor, learn what you're doing, they're basically saying. So that's really all we get. Like we used to see that there was Intel default and Intel extreme and all that. Anyway. Oh, right here. So Intel default is Intel Extreme, I'm guessing. It says load the Intel Extreme profile and set ICC max to 400 amps. PL1 and 2 are set to 253 for 19, 1300 and 1400K and KF, which is fine. Okay, let's just load that. The Intel default settings, which means now, by default, Asus Multicore Enhancement has switched to enforce all limits. That's fine. Let's now see what our thermal velocity boost stuff looks like. So at, well, I guess it shows one and two. At 80, we'll lose 100 megahertz. At 90, we'll lose another 100 megahertz. But for three, you know, for any cores, three or more being used, it's kind of not doing anything. Okay, so really all I did was turn off, turn on Intel limits and then XMP. That's all I changed. A pretty strong feeling we're gonna lose score. I can't see at 253 watts with the voltage limit we're gonna have with that, that we could go anywhere near 5.7 all core. I think we're gonna be like 5.4 all core. And then I think we're gonna probably be around 39,000. I think we'll probably lose like a solid 2,000 points. I'd rather lose 2,000 points than all of the points because the CPU's dead. So let's see what our temperature shoot up to immediately. And let's check our wattage right here. Hey, 253, hey, 70, 79. It's at 78, 79. We're at five gigahertz all core, five one gigahertz all core now. So we did lose some speed. We certainly did. And we're gonna lose a bit of score with it too, look. 37,574. That is a stock 13,900 slash 14,900 score. 14,900 is like usually like 500 to 1,000 more. That is a stock score. That is what behavior was expected to happen. 
Look at our V-Core Max. If, if we do the run again, multi-core, let's watch it during the run, right here, V-Core. 1.217, that is such a reasonable number. Now I see this a lot of times, people ask like, why does it say 1.439? Well, if the CPU is not under full load and the cores are bouncing around doing different things and the frequency is high, it has to give it more voltage to give stability to the higher frequencies. But it can do that safely too because it's not doing it one for long sustained periods of time and two, it's well within the safe limit. Intel says anything 1.5 and lower is like, okay. Anything 1.5 and above, they're a little nervous about. And again, the motherboard just have a lot of leeway on how this voltage applies to your CPU regardless of microcode. Anything 1.6 or above, they want a screenshot. They want, they, want to, they want to see it because that should not be happening. And that's kind of what's led to a lot of this failure analysis to figure out that a lot of these, these CPUs were overvolting the crap out of themselves or requesting the voltage and the motherboards were like, sure, take it. The motherboard really should also be responsible for saying, are you sure you want 1.6 volts? Because our records show you should not be exceeding 1.5. And then sign a waiver here, initial these three places and notarize and then off you go. Anyway, yes, the behavior did exactly what I expected it to do. We lost performance, but with it, very reasonable temperatures and very reasonable um, voltages. What I wanna do now is I wanna see what happens with that ASUS overclocking profile. Okay, so let's go ahead and go to advanced OC profile. I have no idea what's changed. I think that technically, yes, that now is doing the remove all limits thing. Uh, Multi-core enhancement, let BIOS, okay. CPU load line calibration, level four recommended for OC. Um, AC-DC load line with VRM load line enabled to disabled, which is actually a, a good thing. We talked about that um, on the phone too, the, how these two can actually um, cause problems when enabled together. So it was already asking for more volts at one point V core, there it is, 1.332. So you can see from 1.217, Actually, that was under full load. Anyway, it's gonna bounce around. Let's see what happens now with a full core workload. There it is, 91, 93, 98. Right back to where it was, 344. So it's, it's essentially what it was prior to us even doing the flashing. And there's our 41,268. The performance is back, but with it, the incredible voltages. So let's do it again here. V core under full load from 1.217 to a 1.385. I mean, if you had, extreme cooling you could do it but I, i'm just not comfortable with that at all so as you can see it just undid everything we did so my recommendations and they're not just my recommendations the recommendations of those that i reached out to in the industry that work with thousands of computers more than i deal with update your bios and make sure that the intel limitation stuff is enabled Okay, you're still going to have brands wanting to push the limits. You're still going to have brands wanting to push their own their own flavor of how they want to deal with an unlocked CPU to make them look better than all of the other brands that are out there motherboard wise. Realistically, your motherboard itself should not be should not be pushing a CPU beyond its factory specifications out of the box, which we've already shown the motherboards will do repeatedly and criminally, as far as I'm concerned. So. Update your BIOS, any 13th or 14th gen, probably not a bad idea for 12th gen either, to be honest, but any Intel motherboard at this point within the last three generations of CPU, update the BIOS and then don't enable any overclocks. There will be another BIOS coming with the microcode stuff in August if everything goes smoothly and, and they flesh out any of the, the bugs that are built into that microcode. But don't believe Intel when they say our microcode was the only problem, because it wasn't. They're kind of sticking up for their board partners and really sort of, I think, unfairly allowing them to get away with what they've gotten away with. It's to, uh, go watch, go watch Wendell, level one text. Go to go to Wendell's personal Twitter and watch what an Asus W680 server motherboard is doing to a 35 watt part. Spoiler alert, it's pushing 253 watts to a 35 watt part. Why? Because Asus and in their infinite wisdom decided to take all of this logic and apply it to all their motherboards and just somehow ignore the fact that it's a 35 watt part with 106 watt boost and say 256 all day long, let's go. The problems continue and this is why people have trust issues in this industry because the brands have been getting away with it for way too long. So anyway, save your stuff because I think the last thing you're gonna wanna have to deal with is RMA. <laughs> Good luck.